Hi everyone. So, we're gonna talk lemons today. When life serves you lemons, make lemonade. Everyone uses the juice from a lemon and they throw the rest of the lemon away, but there's so much more to do with a lemon. Every time you sit there and peel a lemon first, take the zest and you can save it. This way, when doing that, you can use it for fish, you can use it for salads, you can use it for baking. You can use it for a wonderful lemon cake, which we'll wind up doing one in another show. So zest the lemon first, save all that. Put it into a little container, it stays in the refrigerator for up to four weeks, no problem. Put it in the freezer, it stays forever. After you zest your lemon and you save all this wonderful zest and the oils coming from it, then cut your lemon in half. Squirt your lemon, even if you only need one or two tablespoons of it, take the entire lemon and we'll get the seeds out afterwards. Very simple to do. Zest your entire lemon, juice your whole lemon, and then afterwards, take the rest of the lemon, cut it into little pieces, and you can save these in a bag, and after you cut them into pieces, throw them down your garbage disposal. It's a fabulous, fabulous air freshener and cleaner for your garbage disposal. One lemon, three different things. There you go. Hey everyone, Larry here, and today we're gonna to do a quickie, quickie meal that you can do during the week, the weekend, everyone will love it, and it's vegetarian. We're going to do Parmesan roasted cauliflower, oops, wrong color, <laughs> over pasta. And let's start. First, you wanna take a whole head of cauliflower and you just wanna cut it into little florets. Then you're just gonna take a couple tablespoons olive oil, dump it on. You want three cloves of garlic minced, dump it on, and you can use the minced garlic that you buy in the store, it makes it much easier. And half a teaspoon of salt. Dump it all together, stir it. And what you wanna do is get it nice and coated. Once you get it coated, you wanna sit there and put it on a baking dish in a flat layer, and we're going to roast it. If you have a baking dish, and the easiest way to baking dish, I haven't washed the pan, and I can't tell you how many years, not because they're dirty, but because I use the Reynolds Wrap nonstick. It's a godsend. Nothing sticks to it. You can broil cheese and slide it and it comes off. So cut a piece, and instead of putting it in and trying to fix it, the easiest way is every single pot and pan that you do, including souffle dishes, turn it upside down, make a mold of it, and then turn your pan right around and drop it right in. It's done. You don't have to think, you don't have to get the corners and make holes in it. We're gonna take the cauliflower, you're just gonna dump it right in there and spread it out. Like so. We're going to roast that at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. The next thing you wanna do is make the Parmesan cheese dressing for it. I think I said that the wrong way. Cheese. One cup of grated Parmesan, quarter cup of breadcrumbs. I use the Italian flavored ones, it just gives a little more. And then we have an eighth of a teaspoon of chili pep uh, cayenne pepper. I'm losing it today, everyone. Half a teaspoon of garlic salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Mix it all together. This is how you mix it when you're doing it at home. No one knows, nobody cares. All they care is how, many beer, how much beer, how many glasses of wine they can have, and the cheese, it'll be great. We're gonna let, put that aside, and then because that's gonna roast, we're gonna boil the water for the pasta in a few minutes. Okay, so we've already roasted the cauliflower, which I keep calling broccoli. We made the cheese. I want you to reserve half a cup of the water from the boiled pasta. We're using egg noodles today because I ran out of penne, but any type of spaghetti pasta you use is fine. So now what you wanna do is just dump the cauliflower right in, and if you notice, the pan is clean, that's a defect. But the pan is completely clean. I don't have to wash it because of the Reynolds nonstick wrap. So put that in. I want you to put in two tablespoons of butter and half a cup of the reserved water. You're going to mix it. You mix it until it just becomes creamy. The water helps give measurement to it and it gives it a creamy consistency with the pasta. And now we're going to take our cheese with the spices and the breadcrumbs, put it right in. 
we're going to just stir it around goes all over the place and that's natural cooking i would love to have this three thousand square feet kitchen that these people have that is snow white and I never understood how they can cook and they never get anything on their fingernails, especially when they're mixing with dough. You have company coming. You have the most delicious Parmesan roasted cauliflower pasta. It will be a big hit, cost pennies to make, and they'll be coming back all the time for it. You'll see us eating it in a minute. Hey everyone. So we're making a salad to go with this. And the one thing I learned from my brother, who is no longer with me, but he was a great cook, is how to cut a pepper the right way. I was been doing it wrong my whole life. So what you wanna do is you take the stem top, cut it off, take the bottom, cut it off, cut inside the four little pots that hold it together, push it in the sink, drain, take the top, push it out, you have the entire pepper and the bottom. If you have any little seed pots, just cut it out. And now, for your quick way of julienne pepper, you just fold it up the way it is, and you go just like this. And it is that quick, but don't look up when you're doing it because you'll lose a finger. That's why I'm stopping. And then take the other pot. You can sit there and cut a pepper in about 20 seconds for the whole thing. And now your pepper is ready for the salad. There you go. So after cooking the pasta with the roasted broccoli and making a salad with homemade salad dressing, which I will show you on the next video, I said with the lovely Miss Lady Jaja, myself, and hand me that phone, darling. And this is the beautiful Sarah Grove, who was our producer, director, and videographer. Oh my God, I'm She's watching. fabulous. <laughs> Lord Beanie Boy, time for dinner. This is my son. Made a fabulous dinner. So we have the roasted pasta with uh, cauliflower and cheese and salad, and stuff like that. Sweet, camera fuel all the way. Call the gamer fuel. <laughs> All right, that looks good. <laughs> you don't forget your knife and fork. I guess he's doing what he always does. He's fueling up for his game playing. Anyways, the rest of us are going to enjoy this <laughs> lovely dinner. We will see you soon. Bye. Hey everyone, so we just finished our fabulous pasta dinner as you saw us eating and you met Miss Sarah Grow, our producer, director, and videographer. She's holding the camera right now. So for dessert, I'm gonna make two things. We're gonna make a peanut butter cookie, gluten-free, and only with four ingredients. No flour, no baking soda. It's a fabulous cookie. So if you're allergic to peanuts, don't eat it, but if you're allergic to flour and wheat, you can have these. So what we're going to do, I'm back, is we're going to do one cup of brown sugar, a very easy recipe, one cup of peanut butter, and you must use like Jiffy or Skip, don't, Skippy, don't use the ones that are all natural because they don't have enough of the lecithins and the other oils that you need that will lift it up. <laughs> and one egg. Here's a little secret. These little plastic bags that you get at the grocery store to put your vegetables, keep them. You crack your egg. When you crack an egg, don't crack it on the edge because it's too wide and it'll make shells. You tap it on the edge, on the side, the long pot, and then it cracks right in half. Put the eggshell right in here. There you go. Tie it up and put it right in your rubbish. You don't have eggs all over the place. We're gonna mix this in the mixer, and then we're gonna make it into little balls. Put our Hershey Kiss. They're gonna refrigerate for 10 minutes before we do the Hershey Kiss. And then it's gonna be 12 minutes at 3.50 in the oven and you have the most perfect cookies you've ever seen. So, we're going to sit there and just literally blend this. 
It will take all of not even 60 seconds. There you go. It's really 10 seconds. You want to scrape up all the good stuff. I have to scrape this off before Miss Jaja comes because we keep getting into fights over who gets the bowl, who gets the spatula, but she's over there right now, so I'm safe. Because she would be eating half this batter right now. It's one of her favorite cookies. That and my coconut macaroons, which you'll be seeing that, and we'll have her chain down so we'll be able to have some for you. So we're just going to put this in the refrigerator. It's for 10 minutes, no longer, because if you leave it too long, the oils will separate from the peanut butter and then you won't get the cookie to rise perfectly. So we'll see you as soon as that's finished chilling. 10 minutes is up, let's pull out the cookie dough. Perfect, you can see how it's chilled and it's solid together now. The quickest way to make perfect cookies is using an ice cream scoop. This way you get them all pretty much the same size. And what I do with these is, this is about a one and a half one, and I overfill it just a little bit. You roll it into a quickie ball and you put it in. And this is how fast this is going to be. And through wonderful technology, you won't have to watch me roll 18 of them out because the fabulous Miss Sarah is going to sit there and fast forward this. So the cookies are almost done. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a little nice after dinner drink. And it's going to be a sweet one. We're going to mix equal amounts of rum chata and amaretto. It will take like, taste, bleh. I haven't had any yet. It will taste like a coconut almond milkshake. So what you do is you put it on the rock. So I already have the ice in the shaker. And you're going to pour equal amounts. We're going to do it the way I'm taught to do it. That's almost equal, it's not quite equal. Now we have it equal. Put it in, shake it. Let it sit for a second so it can get nice and chill. We'll pour it in these beautiful glasses, but before that happens, I'm just gonna pull the cookies right out. Give me one sec, be right back. And here are our peanut butter cookies baked to perfection. You let them sit for five minutes so that they can harden because they'll be very soft. And as soon as they harden, you'll be able to just slide them off the Reynolds wrap non-stick. And again, don't have to wash the pan. It's the best in the world. So we'll see you in two seconds. But what I'm going to show you is you pour the drinks and get them all ready for everyone. Nice, creamy, creamy drink. Rum chowder is amazing, even on its own. See you at the table. So here we are now, going to enjoy a fabulous cocktail, some homemade cookies, and uh, oh, I think we're missing Lord Beanie Boy. Lord Beanie Boy, come out and have some dessert with us. We have some cookies, we have a fabulous little drink. Oh. Let's take a couple of these then. Okay. Mm. Well, let us enjoy our cookies and our drinks together. And may you all stay safe, be happy. And always remember, leave a little sparkle wherever you go. You had something else too. Oh my Didn't goodness, you? I almost forgot, ladies. Just a quick note to remember, before you use your honey and lemon juice mask from earlier, you always want to make sure that you wax your mustache.